Deadly Doodles, a draw and draw game that is a variant on a style of games that have been very successful in the last couple of years. The roll and write or roll and draw. And here it is a game where the prompt that then people will need to draw on their personal board is not rolled on a die but drawn from a deck. Hence the funny. Well, I don't know, kind of funny uh, name. Deadly Doodles is a draw and draw game with a fantasy dungeon crawl theme. You will draw the path that you are planning to take to explore a dungeon and you will kill these kill cute monsters, collect treasures and then go and visit the dragon and if you visit the dragon then you will score more points for your money. What? The theme is kind of a little strange sometimes. But this is not a game that you will play exactly or completely for the theme i guess each player has a dry erase border representing the dungeon on one side and nothing relevant on the other that is kind of like a missed opportunity to give us two different dungeons i'm playing i played recently the game metro x which also is a draw and draw game and it has two different maps on the two sides so here's the dungeon, important things that we have, entrances to the dungeon that are labeled with letters and then these little sort of like weird lines between the uh, square rooms and those are the places where you will draw the connection when you go from room to room. Then what we have in the room is monsters, weapons, the dragon and loot. We want to touch as much loot as possible, entering as many rooms with loot as possible, entering rooms with monsters, but only if we have the matching weapons. So if I'm entering uh, the room with monster B, I'd better at the end of the game also have the weapon labeled B. That will score me points, otherwise if I only had the monster, that loses me points. If I had the weapon without, with or without the matching monsters, uh, entering rooms with weapons also gives me Point. and uh, entering the room with the dragon will double the value of your loot. So, how do we produce the prompt? Well, everybody will have a board such as this one, the game comes with a bunch, and then you have this deck of cards, shuffle, 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 at the beginning of each turn you draw four and you place them in a location where everybody can see them, and then people will have to, if they can, will have to draw <clears throat> these uh, shapes, these pathways on their board. You can start from different locations, say maybe I place this one here and then this one here and then this one here and so on and so forth. There's nothing against that. But each line that I draw needs to connect either to an exit or to a previous line. Also, at the end of the game, there is a bonus for not using a lot of entryways. So it's much better if you choose just a bunch and you build from there. And so, for example, I decide to build that one there and then I draw this one here and this one here and this one <clears throat> here, for example. And that's how it goes. I also mark a little one here in the top left corner of the boxes that I used to indicate that that was turn one. It helps us later in case there's any confusion. It also marks down the number of turns. At the end of the seventh turn, then the player with the high score, that's when we tally points, high score wins the game. There are a couple of other cards. If I get the draw two cards, then I discard it and I, this, and I draw two to replace that one. So unless I draw more, draw two, a draw two in a turn will generate five cards. Also, it's a trap. That's an interesting card that I also have to place. It doesn't do anything for me, but, and I have to place it in an empty room, not on top of things, but it could be interesting and cute. Because at the end of the game, players will reveal the traps that they place. And that's also why it's interesting that you can determine the coordinates. You can say, okay, I place the trap in D6. And my daughter Louisa says, I place mine in B2, and so on and so forth. If you place a trap in a location that the opponent plays a path on, then they lose points. So there's a bit of that guessing game there, but not all that much because it's really hard to figure out where the opponent is possibly going. So it's really just an extra random element. And so this time I decided I want to put the straight one here, the T 
there, the elbow, so to speak, here, and the other T, we place it here. I better get the F weapon there, and the trap, for example, here. Was that five? One, two, three, four five cards and that's turn two. So you continue like this for seven turns and at the end what you score is two points for each loot that you, whose room you entered, plus one for each weapon that you cross with your path, plus four for each monster that you cross when you had the corresponding weapon, minus two for each monster that you visited without the right weapon, plus one for each unused entryway Minus two for each unused card. That means if during the game you're unable to place a card, then you get a minus two. I still have to see that happen. Because worse come to worse, just use an entryway that you didn't use. The the panel the bonus that you lose is better than the penalty that you get. Minus three for each trap that hits you. And I think I mentioned this, you double the score of the loot if you if your path crossed the dragon. This is it, my friends. This is how you play deadly doodles which is not a bad game but is far from a great game also my biggest problem that i've had pretty much since i read the rules and then when i played the game was like but this is very very similar to railroad inc which is one of my favorite games period i said it railroad inc railroad inc is one of my favorite games i just played so often with my daughters with adult friends it's a great game it's a roll and write game it is my favorite roll and write game and this one is very similar and right there i can tell you my conclusions is it's similar enough that it makes me think of railroad inc and then i would rather be playing that one the only reason uh if you can choose between the two why you would want this one is that you really hate trains maybe you were traumatized all of your family was hit by a train when you were a kid but you really love dungeon crawls otherwise that game is just superior because the problem that you have here is that gameplay is similar so i have gameplay is okay i like gameplay drawing stuff um you know generating prompts drawing paths but in Railroad Inc. you have two different types of paths, which is the highways and the railroads, and you have to connect them. Here it's just, and you have they can get in each other's way. Here at least you don't usually get in your own way. It's all just one path. So it's a lot more bland that way. Then of course, because of the of the specific locations in which things are and the walls then gameplay is a lot more limited, is a lot more constricted. Yes, you can push your luck and try to go for the monster, and maybe you get it, maybe you don't, but usually you do. You can push your luck to go for the treasure, maybe you get it, maybe you don't, hey, usually you do. Railroad Inc. has a whole other order of magnitude of fun to me, because there are just so many different strategies. You can change your strategy every time, the board can look vastly different. Here, more or less, you will use three or four entryways. You will try to hit three or four monsters, so two or three bags of gold, uh, try to get the dragon. Um, I guess in that sense, the games sometimes are much closer because you really guess like, oh, you got one monster more than me. But after playing it three, four times, uh, I already felt like pretty much I've seen it all. I was, are you sure there isn't another map on the back? Yep, no, there isn't. But, it just becomes repetitive very easy, very quickly. And even before we get to talk about replay value, again, play value is just very, is very bland, it's diluted. Maybe if I wasn't such a big fan of Railroad Inc. and I wasn't constantly looking at this game and thinking, I wanna play the other one. Maybe not because of the comparison, I would like this one better. If this was the first game I ever tried in the right and right, roll and right, draw and right, blah, blah, blah category maybe be blown away but it isn't and it's 2000 it's 2020 so this is not the first game in that category that you have played either in any case it just i don't think it stands up to the standards of the genre of games that we have seen recently from railroad inc to cartographers to so many other excellent ones this one is just feels like a bland uh, quote unquote obvious, a too straightforward version. There just there isn't just enough in there to hold my interest for a full game. For a full game, it's okay. Starting from the second on, I'm just not that interested. My daughters, so I played it with them. 
same thing. They were like, why, why do I go play in this one and not the other game that we like so much? So it's not even that game like, well, okay, it's not great for me as an adult, but at least it's something that my daughters, my kids can play. Your kids can play Metrex, they can play Cartographers, they can play Railroading, they can play better games than this one. This one is just, again, it's not terrible, but uh, with all of the better options out there, it's not a game that frankly I would recommend. Again, unless you're allergic to trains and Cartographers and um, similar themes and you're addicted to dungeons. And even I'm a little bit addicted to dungeons, but I'll pass on this one just it's not terrible, but there is no reason for me to play this one when there are just so many better options out there.